Until then, safe journeys, travelers. We'll see you next time. Bye, ghost nerds. <laughs>this is a great episode it was fun talking to y'all we need to go yeah. right to bed y'all yeah i'll let you know if i have any edits or anything later that we need to get done all right sounds I'm good dream of murder right. bye y'all good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. oh my god are they finally gone they're they finally gone? gone okay are you ready to do this no never i'm never ready well we're gonna do it anyway okay um, let's go Honkai episode. Let's go. I'm going to call Vanessa right now. Do it. Give me one second. Hello. 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 Vanessa. Oh, hello. Can oh my you God. Hear me? Yeah. Here. Is it Honkai time? It's, it's Honkai, Honkai time. time. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Yeah. I'm okay. always ready to do this. All are, right. Let me, do this, let me do this uh, intro nonsense. Add Astro Travelers, and welcome to a very special episode of Tales of Tavat, a Genshin Lore podcast. Except today, we're going to be talking all things Honkai. We want to remind travelers to visit talesoftavat.com to see visual representations of the lore mentioned during today's podcast. Your guides have put them together for you to make things a little easier to understand. Our site also includes our scandalous episodes of our past seasons and special episodes. We have artist spotlights from the community for every episode, and even episodes that you probably have not seen yet. Wallpapers to download, including new Fontaine ones. We had a great time taking those. A new resource section we're creating. So if you ever need a little check-in when it comes to your gaming, that's a great place to check out. It's our fave Genshin merge, which lots of the times we are wearing while we record. And finally, you know her. You love her. She's making her victorious return after the official episode that we recorded with her. We have our very special guest, Vanessa. Thank you very much oh, for being here. Thank you for having me. This is very fun. I'm excited. I don't know how you're going to get away with talking about Honkai on a Genshin Lore podcast, but I'm excited. I mean, <laughs> listen, everyone knows that we're it's just a wash in the Sea of Quanta at this point. <laughs> It's true. I mean, no one wants to hear it, but they're all related. Somehow. <laughs> that fucking sperm whale is still still riding around in the Sea of Quanta. I'm sorry. A lot of things are riding around in the Sea of Quanta. There's so <laughs> much. Mostly I mean, sperm. There's just a lot of sperm happening. <laughs> so little, little, sperm. uh, wait, what? there are little bubble universes. That's, you know. Yes, bubble universes. I mean, you could kind of call that like sperm because never mind. Continuing <laughs> on. <laughs> So just to be clear, during this episode, we are going to be talking about the two Honkai games that are created by Hoyoverse, which creates Genshin. So um, we have Genshin Impact, which is basically a spinoff of Honkai Impact 3rd. Um, so that is the first game that we'll be talking about. We will also be talking about the other Honkai spinoff, Honkai Star Rail. Which is the newest release. Yes, the newest release. It has a lot of crossover from mm -hmm. the first Honkai game. Mm, not so much Genshin crossover happening, mm -hmm. but there is a lot of influence of Honkai on the Genshin universe, which we are going to get into. Yeah, I will say I've only played a like Star Rail and I love it. I just don't have time to play as often as I want. Right, <sighs> yes. And just to be clear... Uh, Vanessa and I play all three games. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. They are massive nerds. Oh and God. I hope that after today, we can really put out there and prove somehow. <laughs> I don't know about proof, but maybe we can get people thinking about how these worlds are all connected, which is why Hoyoverse is a verse. You know, they've mm -hmm. changed their name from Mahoyo to Hoyoverse because they are creating this world. So. Yes. That's really the the goal is. here is to really try to tie the three together, even if some of it's a reach. But I really do think we're going to see all three. It is a shared multiverse. Mm -hmm. And it, that is not speculation. It's proven. Yeah, I think it was I, it wasn't one of the CEOs. It was it was someone pretty high up. That's like they're all part of the same multiverse. 
how they connect, that's up to us to decide until we get like conclusive content. But I mean, we've talked about how Tavat is people are coming from different like worlds. And like, clearly this is a planet that is not earth, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but we have earth in this universe. So it's, it's fascinating. And then you have star rail where, you know, here where you're going to all kinds of different worlds. (laughs) Exactly. So it's, it's, it's a fun time. (laughs) So just to sort of give a general overview uh, for anyone listening that hasn't played the Honkai games, Honkai Impact Third is, or as Al likes to call it, lesbian sim- simulator. Um, it is. I love it. <laughs> it uh, it's very gay. Um, but it is a uh, a game that it includes a lot of different types of gameplay, but it's very sci-fi and it is set in a world where Honkai, which is basically a force that turns people into zombies or into what is called a hersher, which you will hear us talk about numerous times during this episode. Um, a hersher is basically a very powerful and malevolent person. So if someone becomes a, a hersher, that's a human that has been sort of infected by the will of Honkai and is basically bent on destruction and again there are a lot of sci-fi elements to honkai impact third all uh all the playable characters are ladies which we appreciate um they are valkyries who basically go to school to learn how to deal with honkai and how to fight honkai um of course some of these ladies along the way become hershers themselves which is very dramatic and um there's a lot of lesbianism happening also honkai star rail is a spin-off in which um it, it is also very sci-fi based uh but it basically includes a train that flies through space called the astral express and it actually visits different worlds so you are actually uh, going, you know, arguably among different bubble universes in that game, which is bubble universes, of course, is something that ties together all three games as well. Uh, what are you hello? guys doing? Um, hello? hello? Is that Vanessa? What are uh, you guys doing? What? Oh, uh, shit. what? How? Hello. What? How'd you know we're we were doing here? a Honkai <laughs> episode? Oh, Surprise. Well, first off, it's my Zoom account, so I got a little notification when Vanessa joined the call. Uh, You're going to start doing a Honkai episode? Busted. <laughs> um, oh, hi. Well, I mean, uh... We thought you wouldn't want to. Yeah! Hi! hi. <laughs> well, I mean, are we going to talk about Don Hung? Well, I mean, yeah. he is Dong Hung. I'm yes. sorry. We are going to talk about Dong oh. Hung, Yes. In March seven, yeah, yeah, stay with us. Dragon okay. Dick, I can hang out then. Are you gonna? You're gonna actually hang out and talk about Honkai with us? Yeah, I mean, I think Star Rail kind of swayed me a little bit. Uh, oh, nice. All awesome. right, okay. let's do it. Hello. Uh, what's Hello. going on? Hello. Oh, hi, Tiff. Hi. Oh. Oh, <laughs> How did you know we were here? The one you person who posted it in the link in the in the in the discord what what yeah. what's oh, going on uh, and put in the group chat what you guys wow. were doing you didn't answer we, we, Thanks, we, we're doing honkai what Just, it, mm-hmm. we're doing a honkai episode with vanessa well, welcome in oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah, i know but i it can't can be fun yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go throw myself in the spiral abyss okay well no. good luck Best wishes. Well, actually, the abyss. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the sea of quanta. You mean the sea of quanta bubble universe? Can, can somebody throw me a life preserver into the sea of quanta? I need, I need to get out. <laughs> I need. Do they work? <laughs> Probably. Can not. you swim like Nouvellet in the sea of quanta? What if it's zero grav? <laughs> zero. It, it's just zero gravity. It's just you know you floating in the sea of quanta. We all float down here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh god. I hope that after today though you guys will start playing the third. I feel attacked. We call it the third. We want you to start playing. Yes. What are we gonna call the third part two? The third part two. Damn. Okay, (laughs) nothing. (laughs) Well, you guys are trying to like convince us to play, but what got you guys into playing Honkai? I guess specifically, 
Honkai Impact third? For me, it was the Genshin connection. Like I started just reading things about the uh, sort of crossover themes that were going on. I was like, wait, Genshin is like a spinoff of Honkai Impact. So I want to play that. Like I want to know how far back it goes and like what the connections are. And then I, you know, fell in love with the lesbian melodrama. (laughs) I mean, that's, that's, that's exactly what brought me in. Uh, Titties. Titties! was the goal and titties i did receive it (laughs) no it was like okay i was really into like i can't remember what i was watching and i think bees you linked me to a certain fight that we might discuss and i was like oh my god the Mm -hmm. lesbian drama they love each other but they're fighting each other but they're dying but oh my god like it's (laughs) so i love give me a soap opera at any point i want to see it on my screen but also be able to fight with really good jiggle physics it's uh, jiggle physics physics. oh my god (laughs) wow well i'll just say that you know you guys had me on here last time to talk about official so the reason I started playing the third was because official. Um, <laughs> she's there. We'll talk about that a little more later. But yeah, I came for official and I stayed for the Sea of Quanta is what I like to say, because I just didn't think I would like this game so much. And it's meaty. It's got a lot of lore and there's tons to do. You will never be bored playing this game. So and because I don't really want to mash through the dialogue, I want to actually like get into it. Mm-hmm. And since it's so deep and heady. And there's no English VAs. Like, I do have to kind of pay attention and take my time. So I'm the most behind. I'm the most behind out of the three Hoyo games on the third because of that. Um, But it is, I always say, like, I feel like it's my favorite one of all three um, because of how meaty it is. So, yeah, came for Fisher. Stayed Mm -hmm. for the the Sia Quanta. (laughs) I always laugh because Brandon will send me cutscenes from Honkai Impact. And just mm-hmm. be like, watch this. I can't share it anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I can't show Vanessa this. <laughs> yeah, and then I watch it and I get like these goosebumps. And I'm like, oh my God, right? I don't even know the characters. Well, right? that's something about the game that like I always say is that like there's some crazy emotional stuff like going on. Like these cutscenes are so intense. I feel like none of the other games do that. The you dialogue can... is super unhinged, which none of the other games. I feel like Star Rail does dip into the unhinged dialogue mm-hmm. a little bit, but the but the originators of that is mm-hmm. i believe this game this is definitely yeah, hoyo's uh golden child because they get the best of everything they get the yeah. best jiggle physics they get the best <laughs> animations they get the best costume design it is rude they have <laughs> yeah they have full blow like the cutscenes are full blown like cinematics anime shorts yes you're like whoa like why doesn't genshin do this i don't understand i mean i know genshin is working on their own you know actual anime show Mm -hmm. but honkai impact it every major story plot point has like an extended cutscene that is an anime that Mm -hmm. you feel like you're watching a movie and they're always so um existential yes and angsty you feel like you're watching an episode of neon genesis Evangelion. Uh, yeah it was like he was a Sivan kelly i'm like what the he really is yeah and, i mean it, it i think there's a lot to say of the um of the influence of honka impact the third being neon genesis um you can definitely see with the certain collaborations they've had yeah, they do have a collab with, yeah. with Neon Genesis, which is great. Yeah, they do. And it's like, it's they do a lot of collabs. They do. Mm. And I'm like, I can't even remember. They, oh my God, there's a couple of obscure ones that I was like, really? I think eventually Genshin will get there with that kind of stuff. I think like, because I don't want to say it's like lower quality, uh, mm. the third, but it is. I mean, it's like it is older game. And I think that they built Genshin off of the back of, you know, the third. And I think that it definitely is such higher quality with the open world that it is going to take a little longer. I mean, I don't know about game development and how that stuff works, like, for real. But I do know that, like, they do the same level of quality with the OST music mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. performances. I know with third that they have, like, full, you know, <laughs> full soundtracks. Yeah, and or, yeah. yeah, they have, like, bands. Like rock band star rail soundtrack is amazing like mm-hmm. i have been listening to it lately non-stop in my car on the way to work <laughs> and this is why hoyo mix is your top artist in your 
Spotify yeah. wrapped. <laughs> you know, you know, just hey, for the Fontaine I mean... album this month. Like, oh. yeah, I. <laughs> One of my coworkers totally walked in while the Dragon Spine theme song was playing today, and I was like, uh, "Hi, what do you want?" Like, uh, <laughs> He's like, "Let uh, me pause it. Like, <laughs> let me let me restart." I will say that's something the Hoyoverse has on a lot of different gotcha games that they put in a lot of love into the quality of the game, and I, and a lot of games don't take soundtrack into account when it comes to like part of the game and sound and music is such a way to manipulate an audience of how to feel in a moment like you i mean we can talk about port ormos to death because of how fucking baller the fucking soundtrack is and like how insanely desperately sad in okonomiya's entire ost is it is it is so moving and each game has that high quality soundtrack that it's hard not to get attached to it. I mean, first of all, with Genshin, they have canonized music as a language, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, that is like part of the Remurian lore is that they actually use symphonies to communicate. So they, yeah, they they are in very heavily invested in music to the point where, you know, now in Genshin, they're actually using it like as a storytelling device. Yeah, that's actually not uncommon. There, there are certain cultures in Central and I think Eastern Africa, all the way to Western and Northwest Africa, where drumming is a language of its own. Where mm. depending on what beats you're playing, you're you can either tell a song, it could be you know a warning, but no, that's that's actually super cool that they have that. I haven't gone into that quest line yet because everything, but yeah, that's that's so cool. So I thought what we could do is I'm going to go through just sort of the basic storyline of Honkai Impact Third, um, and you know we can get it into here and there some you know overlap between the other games and then after that i figured we can just go through some like straight up comparisons of all the three games <laughs> like this character Ooh, looks okay. like this character <laughs> so um <laughs> to start off honkai impact thirds uh origin so you know it's honkai impact third or the third as we lovingly call it um there were two honkai games before this one that were mobile only they were both side scrollers and in i guess chinese it was hokai like h-o-u-k-a-i um gakuen i might be pronouncing that wrong but basically the first one was called when it was westernized like released you know in the west it was called zombie girl kawaii (laughs) (laughs) which is adorable Uh, where it was just Kiana, the protagonist of Honkai Impact Third, fighting zombies. And then you also had part two that came out, which was a little bit more um, heavy with like lore and things. And that was called Hokai Gakuen 2, or when it was westernized, it was called Gun Girl Z. Um, I thought it was Gun Girl. <laughs> it might be, because I be, read it. It might be it, Gun Girl Z, though. Yeah, it might be girls like just with the z on the end of girl but i read it two separate ways and i don't know which one's correct (laughs) and that's also kiana though that second one yeah so i think that it included a bunch of other characters like i know it had like sakura and some other characters in there but the storyline is a little bit of a departure i think when they released honkai impact third they actually made a conscious decision to separate those storylines. So by uh, you know all intents and purposes, Honkai Impact Third is designed to be like the first entry point into that universe, even though it wasn't technically, but it, it was designed to sort of be like a reset. Do you think that means that there's going to be like a big zombie thing in the game eventually? Or like in any of the games? Well, there like, is, are a, we there is a zombie. Chi-chi? I mean... <laughs> Well, no. maybe. I mean, there is a big zombie component to Honkai Impact 3rd. Oh, shit. Okay. That's so crazy. So it's like, because I don't play the 3rd, mm. I don't play Honkai Impact. So it's very, like, spacey and techy, but also zombies. Like, yes. supernatural? Ooh, because okay. the, the Honkai energy, when it sort of possesses people, it turns most people into zombies. 
Like, oh, unless right. you have um, a natural resistance to Honkai energy, you're basically going to become a zombie. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and you see me fighting every time I stream it for you, and I'm I'm always killing those things, and I'm like, those are zombos. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my Whenever, God. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but I'll point them out to you next time. <laughs> so the basic storyline of Honkai Impact 3rd, obviously there are three quote-unquote impacts or eruptions. Um, the first one was in 1952, and that's when you have the first human becoming the first Hersher, um, which is the Hersher of Reason. And again, a Hersher is just someone that is basically taken over by Honkai energy and they become godlike. They're usually very malevolent. However, this first Hersher of Reason was not malevolent. And that person was Welt Joyce. So Welt Wait, Joyce like becomes... Welt from Star Rail? So wow. his predecessor, <laughs> yes. So Welt Joyce oh. becomes the first Hersher, the Hersher of Reason. He eventually dies um, and transfers his Hersherness over into Joaquim, who is, which is the real name of Welt Yang from <gasps> Honkai Star Rail. What? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, ha- well, Yang is an old man, basically, because, <laughs> again, this was like in the 1950s. But, yeah, so, well, Joyce, you know, transfers it over to this person named Joaquim. Joaquim takes on the same uh, first name, but then, you know, has a different last name. So he's well, Yang. And then eventually that gets transferred. The Hersher of Reason gets transferred from well, Yang over into Branya. Oh, my God, and- what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Branya and Honkai Impact is the Hersher of Reason and, you know, is one of the uh, few non-evil Hershers. And before that, it was Welt Yang. And before that, it was Welt Joyce. What so happened th- to Welt Yang that he's no longer a Hersher? I think that it had something to do with the Sea of Quanta. <laughs> <gasps> Not- My favorite thing! <laughs> and... um yeah, Branya was like basically trapped in the Sea of Quanta, and it had to do with his Hersher core being sort of removed okay. from him, and then Branya takes it on. So, what makes someone a Hersher is their a Hersher core, which can either be built up gradually over time, or it can be sort of absorbed if it's pre-existing. So, I think Branya okay. absorbed Welt's core and became the new hersher of reason and did he die then or did he just go to star rail he like switched games no he was he was still alive and they actually have this like really moving conversation after branya becomes the new hersher and yeah welt is just sort of like passing that on to her and she's like the new generation of the hersher reason and welt is sort of like still around and he's still you know involved but he's no longer has that that godlike power that Branya has. Mm. Branya, of course, is also in Honkai Star Rail, but the, it's mm. not the same Branya. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the actual only character in Honkai Star Rail that is the same person from Honkai Impact 3rd is Welt Yang. Mm-hmm. The Welt Yang in Honkai Star Rail is the actual same Welt Yang from Honkai Impact 3rd. I forget who said it, what game said it, but someone said it, and it was like, he traveled. Yeah, so in Honkai Impact 3rd, he basically goes through like a a portal, basically, and um, travels, you know, through different worlds and ends up with the Astral Express. Whereas, you know, Branya and Sila and Himiko, other characters that are also in Honkai Impact 3rd, those are different doppelgangers you know, different universe versions of those characters from Honkai Impact. But the Welt Yang that's in Honkai Star Rail is the same Welt Yang. Mm-hmm. Which confirms, that confirms the him. connection. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, no, don't I apologize. wonder how that feels for him. Yeah, I wonder how that, that like feels for him. Because then isn't he just seeing like different shades of the same person over and over? I mean, we are too. Mm. I mean, D. Luke, Himeko, Argenti. Yeah. <laughs> they, he sort of touches on it in an interesting way when he is talking about Luocha in Honkai Star Rail, because that is sort of an alternate version of the main antagonist in Honkai Impact 3rd, whose name is Auto Apocalypse. 
And so oh, there, there's actual yeah. like gameplay in Star Rail where Welt is very untrusting of Locha and is like, I don't trust this person. <laughs> it's because, literally Otto. You know, yeah. Because <laughs> he knows like how evil Otto Apocalypse was. So like, is this, you know, offshoot version of him like really, um, you know, a good person or not? That must be so hard for him. Every time he meets a new person, he's like, is this like someone I know? Like, he's looking at March 7th going, do I know you? <laughs> when she, like, gets How unfrozen from the ice. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, the year of the Branya um, replacement is still in the 50s? No, no, no. That's, like, it happens in in game. So it's... Because they say the second impact is the year 2000, around there. Mm-hmm. So that's, like you know 50 years have passed right and branya doesn't branya doesn't become the hersher of reason until the events in the game okay so somewhere in between. so it's like in the you know 2015 ish yeah so past the third okay got mm-hmm. it got it right so yeah you have the first impact which was in 1952 the second impact um one one of the fun things about honkai impact third is that it is to- a story that is told across different media and one of the things that they use is manga like we have we know that we have the genshin manga which is a prequel but honkai impact do we all has... know that i don't think tiff knows about that <laughs> tiff don't um, want to know what is that called what was that the manga that Ma- you gotta manga. Read. i've never heard of it M-A-N-G-A. i've never heard of it it's like a no, comic I'll, book I'll, I'll mail it to you <laughs> <laughs> no thank you oh, God, yeah, you just print it Leave yeah. your eyelids open. Check and your email. You to watch. <laughs> well, so so Honkai Third intertwines them, right? The manga in the story. Yes. So they're like yes. sprinkled throughout. No, they are. Yeah, okay. and you can actually, while you're playing the game, they will have like a little button in the bottom right. Sometimes, depending on the chapter that you're on, and it'll link you to the the manga to read. I swear, I've read them all completely out of order. <laughs> Because I don't, I was trying to think about like the manga today when I was thinking about talking with you all. And I was like, what order did I read them in? Because I've read four of them and I don't know what order they Yeah. Go. And I think a lot of them have been translated into English, but I don't know when they were released in English because they were, some of them are even like fan translations. So yeah, we don't like, you can't go to your, your local bookstore and just buy the uh, Honkai Impact mangas in English. They're basically online only. Mm. And who knows when they were they were actually released. And that makes it so difficult to like truly start thinking of um of really nice theories because again, we can't necessarily trust that each translation is completely correct. Mm-hmm. Though they're more than likely these fan translations have like done their due diligence or maybe are even native speakers who are mm-hmm. who are doing really good work for us but again because it there's no like official translation for us like it's it's hard to confirm some things yeah i did link you guys um and you can do whatever you want with those links but there are some links to some of them to the mangas yeah i'll include them up on the on the site too so this way mm-hmm. anybody who is interested in reading them Oh, thank a, you, Tiff. She's a Honkai yeah, accomplice. You. Making me Being do so Honkai nice. stuff. Honkai accomplice. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to get you Honkai merch. Oh, if, my if God. Anyone, if anyone is interested in Honkai Impact, like if you start playing the game and you're curious about the mangas, there's one in particular that is very important to read, and that is the second eruption or second impact manga. Yeah, that one is good. Yeah, it's very, um, it has so much backstory about um, the protagonist, who is Kiana Kozlana, um, but it tells the story of Siren, who was the Hersher of the Void. It's sort of her villain origin story. And so that is a very important one to read. It also has a lot of backstory about Kiana's parents, Siegfried and Cecilia, so I definitely recommend that one. There's a, another one called what's it? Azure what? Azure Waters, yeah. Azure Waters. That's the uh, the backstory of the Branya Sila love story. I that... say it's Azure Waters, like because it brings the tears. I tell you, yes. I mean, it's called <laughs> Azure Waters, but I, I literally like could cry thinking about it. <laughs> 
such a tender story. It's, it's like painful and beautiful and wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so the second impact that's told that story is told through the manga. Again, it's Siren's uh, villain origin story. Um, Siren was this girl who was kidnapped and experimented on by this organization called Shiksul, which is run by Auto Apocalypse, who I mentioned before. Um, and basically, Otto's goal is to use young girls because in this game universe, girls have a natural resistance to Honkai energy in a way that that guys do not. So he's basically using an army of girls to infect them with Honkai energy to sort of use their abilities to adapt to Honkai energy in order to fight Honkai. So he's like, I'm going to take all these girls, give them Honkai powers, even though sometimes that's bad for them. But that's the only way that we can actually fight the Honkai is by using Honkai against itself. So So you're fighting fire with fire? Yes. And Siren Mm -hmm. gets kidnapped by Shixel, by Otto's organization, um, is experimented on in a very horrifying and traumatic way she ends up freeing herself but then she's contaminated with honkai energy she becomes the hersher of the void which the hersher of the void for anyone who has sort of been paying attention or have heard the rumors yeah i was um, talking about you (laughs) the hersher of the void eventually becomes kiana and kiana as the hersher of the void looks a whole lot like the unknown god in genshin impact Mm. I mean, it's but, almost like identical. It's crazy. Really? Yes. Yeah. Like hella. hella but before is... it was Kiana, it was this girl named Siren. So th- again, this Siren is around. Look like the, the no, same Siren one? looks completely different. She has Before purple testing. hair. Yeah, she's really cute. Mm-hmm. And she so this again. This is a uh, the year around the year two thousand in game. So she becomes the Hersher of the Void. She gets all these crazy powers. She turns her friend Bella into a dragon <laughs> named Benares. Um, That's why Al likes this game. Yeah. Banana? Yeah. Yeah. Banana? I mean, anything fight. with like somewhat of a Game of Thrones reference, or like maybe just like in my dreams. But anyway. But she's basically, uh, you know, trying to destroy the world because she's very bitter and traumatized by what was done to her and she just wants to kill everyone um she ends up going to the moon and meets the will of honkai which is sort of the the origin of all the honkai powers they're they're actually coming from the moon um and the will of honkai gives siren extra powers which are elemental powers which is interesting because this is sort of a crossover in a way with of genshin where you have like the different elements being used and her elemental powers were given to her via gems which are sort of like lesser honkai cores and i don't know why i'm obsessed with the names of these gems <laughs> but they just have fun names so there's the gem of conquest which gives you the power of thunder or lightning there's the gem of desire which gives you the power of wind there's the gem mm-hmm. of serenity which gives you the power of death and then there's the gem of it, haste what? which gives you the power of fire you were saying that, and at first I was like, oh my god, maybe this will like relate back to their ambitions with the visions. And then you were like, mm-hmm. is death? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, never mind. There's no death <laughs> element that I know about. Yes. I know. I'm wondering what if that's maybe whatever, whatever day void, has. Void element? I don't it's know. The void, but, probably. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Siren goes through all this drama. She get, gathers all this power. She's like just trying to destroy the world. She has this big epic battle with Welt Yang, who is at the time still the Hersher of Reason. And what one of the powers of the Hersher of Reason is that they can create any type of structure that you know a bunch of different consciousnesses within them can imagine. So he basically fights the hell out of Siren. Um, it also introduces Kiana's parents which is Siegfried Kazlana and Cecilia Sheriak, uh, as well as their BFF, who is Teresa, who later becomes the headmistress of Kiana's school. And then I'm going to spoil a couple things from the uh, Honkai Impact mangas. Actually, I'm going to try not to. Um, it's okay if you do. Yeah. It's for the greater so, good. 
Kiana, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and spoil. It. All right, so Kiana's mother dies in this war against Siren, and Kiana, who is a little kid at the time, gets kidnapped by Otto. So her father, Siegfried, breaks into Otto's compound to rescue his daughter, but while he's in there, he finds a clone of her. Oh and God. this clone of Kiana is she's not just a clone she's like kiana's clone but she's spliced with dna from siren so he tries to rescue you know his actual daughter but he fails but instead he ends up rescuing the clone of kiana oh god like irl kiana dies no she doesn't die she basically is raised by otto but we don't really we don't idea. really see anything about her after this point for most of the game. So Otto's giving me major Detore vibes. Yes, really absolutely. Is. And he ha- he has a lot of uh copies of his body by the way. Yeah. Who, yeah, Detore. Jesus yes. Christ. <laughs> um, God, it. Yeah, so, she didn't spoil me. I knew this stuff. <laughs> I think I saw this already. Yeah, so Siren Siren um, you know, is eventually defeated by Siegfried, which is Kiana's father, so that's interesting. And then Siegfried raises the clone, Kiana, the Kiana clone, who is, you know, the protagonist of this game. But he ends up uh, having to abandon her in order to throw Shixel off of her trail because they're trying to get her back, of course, because she has this like insane, valuable Syrian DNA. And so that sort of takes us up to the third impact, which are the events of the game. So there's part one of Honkai Impact 3rd, which is the meat of the game right now. There, There's going to be a part two release next year. But part one is, you know, it tells the story of Kiana um, and then May, uh, who is someone that is very similar to uh, Raiden A <laughs> and Genshin, and then Branya. So th- those three characters are like the main characters of the whole storyline. There are like 35 chapters that tell the main story. It has an actual ending, which is great. And then, yeah, so the third impact storyline is that there's this zombie outbreak in a city called Nagazora, and Kiana is fighting all these zombies, and she is saved at one point by May, um, this other girl who rescues her. And then it was love at first sight. <laughs> And uh, May is later revealed to be a Hersher, and her energy basically alerts Shixel to her presence, which prompts Himiko to fly over to try to kill May because Himiko is working for Shixel. Himiko, of course, is a character in Honkai Star Rail, but this is a different version of her. Uh, And then Kiana gets wounded very badly, but... As May sort of like goes full evil and Dark Phoenix, Kiana sort of wakes up and stops her through the power of love. <laughs> um, and that is like strong enough to send the Hersher within May sort of back inside. She, she's basically able to repress it again. Uh, so meanwhile, Branya becomes friends with May, even though she's on this like weird mind controlled mission from Kokolia, who's another character from. Honkai Star Rail, who's also in Honkai Impact. And that is like her mother through an orphanage because Branya, you know, the OG orphan mm, <laughs> of the Hoyoverse. Yeah. Have it's not a Hoyo game if there's no no orphans. That's right. It's true. So yeah, you have these three characters that become, you know, I mean, you have Kiana and May, which are very much in a romance. And then you have Branya, who's their BFF, who develops her own romance with Sila. And um, the uh, the three of them basically get rescued by Himiko and are voluntold to join the Shiksoul Academy. And they become Valkyries, which are, you know, th- these militant warriors raised to fight Honkai. And they go through many trials and tribulations. And um, I'm going to leave it at that. There's a lot I could spoil that I'm not going to. <laughs> that is so crazy. Out of the 35 chapters, I would say I'm at 23, I think, out of 35. So I've still got a little bit to go. But I appreciate yes. you not spoiling, even though I know some general spoils. There's, yeah. trust me, the, like the best one you don't know yet. Oh, good. <laughs> so there's a lot to unpack. And mm-hmm. there are other chunks of the game that, like I had said before, it's meaty. There's a lot to do. You'll never get bored. So maybe you can explain 
to me and all the listeners that those 35 chapters, we're going to call it the main storyline, right? Mm -hmm. Then there are these other little chunks that you can play that are the Elysian realm and the post Honkai Odyssey. There's also like an open world section that really Mm -hmm. centers around Yai Sakura. And and then there's Chronicles, which I'm like, where do these all fit with the main story? Are they meant to be played as like sidebar or are they intertwined? Yeah, they are. Uh, whenever the chapter, you guys talk about it, this is where I get lost. I'm lost in how they fit because I'm really just trying to do the main storyline. But <laughs> I know that I've dipped into Elysian Realm. Um, so if you could explain that. So Elysian, Elysian Realm and post Honkai Odyssey, those can be played whenever, but you have to unlock them at a certain point of the story. Like doing so many chapters of the main. Right. Got and it. then yeah. and then they will unlock. Now, post Honkai Odyssey is set seven years in the future after the end of chapter 35. Um, so that is sort of like its own separate thing. You don't really need to know anything before playing it, other than you sort of know that a general idea of like what happens at the end of the game. But um the Elysian realm is very central to uh one of the sections of the game um i forget which chapters it is you're not there yet vanessa but it is like a tied into um you know like one of the hershers being activated and like going through that but you don't have to worry about that because it's not going to spoil you to play through it once it's unlocked it's ready to to be played and then it will sort of come together in the main story later okay like it's its own separate thing, but then it actually gets involved in the main storyline. I, I, I forget which chapter it is, but at one point you're going to be like, "Oh yeah!" Like you're you will have been playing through the Elysian Realm, and you're going to be like, "Yeah, I know all these characters. Got They're from it. The, the previous era, you know." So it's so is it safe to say that players can you know kind of tackle the main storyline and play these other ch- chunks like kind of on the side casually? Yes. yes. And they're meant to maybe, I mean, I don't know when, in what order they all came out. I'm sure there's like something online that says it, but maybe they were released as sidebar, you know, after the 35 chapters were done. They, well, no, not. Or were they rolled out? Like they were rolled out like specifically, like you have to get to a certain chapter and then it unlocks. But yeah, once it's unlocked, you don't have to worry about it spoiling. Like you can play it as you want to. An open world is different than those two? Yeah, open world, there's different versions of the open world. And it's, I mean, it's it's kind of um, not really important in terms of the, the grand story of like the, uh, like the uh, Sakura thing. You don't need to play the open world to understand Sakura's story. So kind of like a very side, it's, like story quest or something. Yeah, it's supplemental. It's not, it's not necessary. And just to clarify for you guys who don't play, the open world is not truly open world. So like it's not like Genshin where you're gonna run around it. It's just called open world, but it's not technically open world. It be. reminds me a lot of like any of the Final Fantasy games before oh shit. Like the couple newer ones. Like I'm thinking of um oh man, what is it? The one with lightning as the protagonist. Fourteen. Is that fourteen? No, 13. 13. 13. 14 yeah. is the MMO. Yeah, I was like, hold up. <laughs> it's that like one's fully open, world open world. Where everything's like a line, basically, but it yeah. makes you feel like it's open. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's... know why they call this open world, but maybe it's a translation thing because it is an open world um, and neither is Star Rail, although that doesn't really matter. But Yeah, it's more mm. of like a semi- semi linear open world so you only have one place to go but you can anything in a said area you can go yeah, to yeah you're free to roam it but mm-hmm. you're in that map or in that section yeah, yeah. Uh, star rail feels more open world than anything i've ever seen with honkai i know it's not but it feels more yeah i agree with you on that and we can talk about a little bit more of star rail like when we compare things, because that is something that like, for me, I don't miss it when I'm playing Star Rail. I don't feel confined. There are a lot of maps <laughs> mm-hmm. that you can roam around in. I was going to say, so that's sort of this the storyline, a uh, very simplified, simplified version of the storyline without too many spoilers. 
And then, I mean, unless y'all have anything that you want to cover, I thought we could get into some comparisons. And oh, theories. hell yeah. And theories and random things. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's really where my <laughs> interest and opinions will be, because you did such a good job of, like, recapping this, the mm-hmm. whole, like, events of the, the three and back, so... so. I got nothing Thank to you. say about that. Yeah. Do you want do you want to um get into some Genshin versus Honkai Impact? Sure. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Because I know in reality, like Mohoyo, aka Hoyo Verse now, is a big company, but it's also very, you know, lucrative to keep reusing model types. <laughs> if that makes sense. Cause I know um every like early on before we knew um you know the majority of what the archons were going to look like in genshin a lot of them were comparing it to different characters in uh in honkai impact the third so it's interesting how yes the character character models have been like pretty similar as we can see with the unknown god in siren mm-hmm. but i feel like it's their their characters can be so widely different or very similar so i'm like this is is it is are they making every redhead particularly like either really fucking hot or really fucking gloomy (laughs) for a reason is it just because of the red hair (laughs) yeah i think some of them are very intentional you know, references. And then other times I think it's just like, well, maybe they were not the most creative when they designed that character. <laughs> maybe they, uh, you know, were sort of writing on the the backs of other characters that they had already designed. Like Honkai Impact third characters. Yes. <laughs> like Venti is actually Wendy. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. God. Have you ever looked at Timu? <laughs> Anytime I look oh at Genshin stuff on Timu, <laughs> they list the characters oh with their God. Honkai names. So any Venti thing I see is like Wendy, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> For some reason, I just think of like Wendy from like Peter Pan every time you said Wendy. <laughs> yeah. That actually is quite funny because of the wind element, because Wendy can fly, you know, when they're mm-hmm. when they're going to Neverland. Yeah, then Wendy is Wendy, 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 Wendy can fly Impact too. Yeah, <laughs> is a for sure with wind powers. Yeah, exactly, She's literally venti. <laughs> Which it, it's 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 that's why I find it so interesting because like certain 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 characters don't have that much relation, but the fact that Wendy venti rhymes, they're. And slutty outfits are the same. Yeah, the midriff <laughs> Wendy and Venti are very similar. But you know, midriff when tattoo. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. But then, like, you know, it's different, right? Because Wendy's not a bard. She's not like, hi guys. Like, it's yeah. not. <laughs> it's, it's very different. It's different you know? personality. But there is a little like taste of Honkai Impact Third in a lot of Genshin stuff. Yep. So, yes. With Rich Brandon. I mean, obviously, <laughs> the Unknown God versus the Hersher of the Void, which yeah, is a big one. when Kiana goes evil. Um, I mean, yeah, that just a lot of people think that the Unknown God is the Hersher of the Void. Uh, I know we've brought up Project Arc before. Mm-hmm. I actually don't. I, I know I, I uh, like to play up the crossover theory of like, you know, Project Arc was like the spaceship that left the planet in Honkai Impact mm-hmm. to basically search out other habitable worlds. And that but nothing maybe... ever happens with it, right? It's like Grisero, Griseo, the girl with the paintbrush, that girl. Uh-huh. I think like nothing happened with Ark. Well, we don't know for sure. Oh, okay. Um, I, like that's you just actually... never hear about it. Well, it's it's actually coming back in like in right part now. Two. I think it's in the interim story, like before part two. Oh. Like I think it's happening right now. Because she has a lightsaber and she's grown up anyway. Um, she's in the banner right now, isn't she? Yes, Star- that's what it is. Star- yeah, Wars I was like, my Genshin. Yeah, but it's it's literally like a space game. Yeah, so I do. Love and she's that. fifty thousand years old, by the way. Anyway, um, there's Kazuha versus Fuhua, <laughs> which good. I mean, they look so much alike, and they have very similar vibes. They're both serving main character energy without being the main character. Nice. There's a 
versus May. <laughs> May in Honkai Impact is the Hersher of Thunder. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's that. There's Yai Miko versus Yai Sakura. There's Al Haytham versus Sue. Karara versus Pardophilus. Uh, Diluc versus Murata Himiko. Which also, like, I love that Himiko's first name is Murata. Oh my because... god! Yeah, yeah, that was the. Uh, I think that was one of the reasons I was like, hmm, I should probably start playing Star Rail mm-hmm. because like, one, you can take Vanessa. No. No. I could never. But is she going to be confused. like? What never. if we meet the uh, the Natlon uh, Archon and it looks like Himiko? Ah, uh, we're going to die. The Barada, oh, like, are the people from <laughs> Natlon, right? And yeah, Tiff is then. rolling in the abyss right now. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, Tiff? How yeah, you doing? God. Listen, how's, how's well, for, but, how's the one thing well? I thought we actually knew knew what the Natlon Archon looked like. That's... No, we don't. Mm-hmm. We have no idea. Tiff's so going to be a May uh, main. I'm going to be a. I don't know. A May main. <laughs> a Yai, Yai Sakura main. There should be a Raven main. If, oh. if, yeah, that's actually. Is that the one that I accidentally put on my Hoyo profile? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we should put her back. Oh my God, my put her favorite back. story. Put her back. Put her back. <laughs> I, uh, you know how on the Hoyo Labs you can pick your little profile picture and stuff. So I was doing it. I was doing it on my phone and I was like, oh, I'm going to put this picture of uh, Kudrasara because I, I love her. Um, she's like my adult goth idol and uh fiends was like why why do you have a bankai character and i was like excuse me like but no i don't (laughs) you love it you (laughs) bought it it. yeah change that real quick (laughs) there's um noelle versus rita yeah but noelle wishes (laughs) no uh yeah she does nikita versus teresa um i love teresa razor versus Branya, which is one that sort of surprises me but i Mm -hmm. can see it now, my, my oh, favorite yeah. is Chi Chi versus Sora. Oh, oh my God, not yeah. Sora with the freaking IV that she brings <laughs> <No>. around. <laughs> oh no. She's I mean, just so though. sickly. I mean, she's basically a zombie. She is. I know that like Chi Chi and Sora look alike, but Sora, from what I've seen, makes yeah. me think more of Kale, like personality wise. Yeah, there's, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. <laughs> that's really funny i just think it's funny that like chi chi's a zombie and sora is just like perpetually wounded she's close to being there yeah <laughs> and then you have bishel guys who is bishel there's no doubt about it you get bishel you get oz you get the thunder bishel. lightning attack you get midternax waltz you get it all in both Everything. Games. and i'm sure we're gonna see it in star rail i'm waiting for the day i hope so one of my like favorite things when thinking about Honkai, and I don't say that very often, but including Star Rail, which I do wow. love, is the fact that like their icons are all different too. So like the icon on like your iPad for Genshin is Paimon, for Honkai Star Rail it's March, and for mm-hmm. Honkai the Third it's Kiana. And the only thing that I can keep thinking about in my head is the freaking Moon Sisters from Genshin. And the idea of like Kiana maybe coming down as the primordial one slash unknown god slash heavenly principles, getting rid of the moon princesses and one of them being March who got frozen in ice and like kicked out into space to later be found by the Astral Express and one of them being Paimon who you know, lost a piece of herself and somehow ended up back on Tavat. Like, that's, like, all I could think about is that they're related somehow. And that's, like, the one theory that makes sense to me. I like where you're going with that. That's that's kind of cool. Right? And, like, the more you read into March, like, I'm not gonna lie, the Don Hung, I love Don Hung, and I think they already gave him such great characterizations, and he had such a plot twist, like, so early on in the game, which they didn't give us with like Kaya, Amber, or Lisa, you know, your starter mm-hmm. characters in Genshin were, they're getting their plot twists if they're getting them, like now. <laughs> what is that, like three years later? Nah, they're forgotten. Where Don, no. No Don Hong had them. his in like six months. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> and I just feel like March is also going to have that big turnaround at some point. Like being the icon of the game, and we know she was locked in ice. I and, can't wait to find out. And we know that the reason she can't remember is basically her own mental block to protect herself. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I will say something to speak to that is that 
I believe Star Rail has been really good at sh- like streamlining story and getting mm-hmm. and getting it out there. They're not dragging with the story. And obviously it's a very new game and it's still very in like beginner stage. You could probably be caught up with Star Rail, you know, within a week of playing it right now. Um, but I think they're doing a really good job at rolling out storyline and giving us a satisfactory like outcome to every right. end mm-hmm. of every like I don't want to call it an archon, but yes, every archon that we've been given, we have meaty content that like does wrap up and they deliver. Uh, whereas, no offense to Genshin, I love it, but they're not giving us a whole lot. They're like pr- deliberately sort of like dragging it out because obviously we have so much more traveling to do. But mm-hmm. I-, I think that's something to be said more about Star Rail being very streamlined because mm-hmm. I also see the dialogue is very streamlined as well. They're also no. not afraid to kill people just like Honkai Impact. Yeah, that's or... what I mean. They're moving the story like faster and harder. Right. Another thing I just wanted to say about March, and this is like all I got, guys. I don't got a lot of stuff on Honkai. <laughs> but uh, March is... When she's found, she's found in something called six phased ice. Mm-hmm. And like six phased ice is like a real thing that it, it really can only be found in space, like IRL. It needs to have like some crazy amount of pressure. It's like the ap- absolute zero shit. What? I didn't know that. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So, March, if you talk to her, she says that she woke up on the Astral Express and she tells you that Himeko, Welt, and a third passenger who we don't know the identity of, were there when she woke up. If you talk to Welt or Himeko, who were both there, they say that the second they brought the ice onto the Astral Express, it melted. And there's something about the fact that this ice is, like, controlled by, in not IRL, but in <laughs> Star Rail, is controlled somehow by, like, imaginary powers. So it can't be found on a normal planet, and usually only imaginary powers can melt the ice. And Welt is imaginary, but, right, that's the yellow element that's in his, Hong Kong. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. his element. So I thought maybe it was Welt, but they almost make it sound like the second she got on, she melted out. And I just think that's hmm. interesting. It's like, who was that third person on the Astral Express 2? I think March might have been on the Express before Dan. I think so, And too. But does this mean that six-phased ice is quantumly aligned? Well, and no, they're saying it's imaginary aligned. Well, no, you said that. I by... thought you said that a uh, imaginary is what melts it. Like the only thing that can melt it. Because that's it's ruled by that. So, like someone with imaginary oh. has to make that decision. I guess I don't understand it a hundred percent, but it's ruled by imaginary is the phrasing. But March also, if you talk to her, says that her powers that she uses are six phase ice herself, like as well. So it's like, whoa, March, you're using this crazy ice power? What the frick? You don't even have normal ice. You have six-faced ice. What's the power of cuteness? (laughs) The power of cuteness. I did see, like, this crazy theory a while back that it's possible she actually froze herself Mm -hmm. in a fight-or-flight mode, and hence why her memories are also foggy. You know, you were mentioning that she purposely might be protecting herself. Right. And I just think, I don't know, there's a lot of interesting things. And for me, of course, I want to make the Genshin link because March and Dan are my favorite characters in Star Rail. So it's like, I'd love to see them since I'm not seeing Albedo in Star Rail. And (laughs) yeah, yeah. although, although I will say I did find a way to connect Albedo to Star Rail already. And it is through Don Hung. Oh. So there are two symbols in Chinese that they use to spell out Don Hung. And the symbol for Don and the word Don actually means Cinnabar. <laughs> Stop. Are you serious? Cinnabar. Yeah, and then, Cinnabar. You and will then find the Cinnabar everywhere you go. I will find Cinnabar everywhere. This so then Hung confirmed. means constant or fixed. So it's like Constant or fixed cinnabar. Constant cinnabar. Whatever that the, means. That's the Sounds world you live in. Right. Huh. <laughs> but it does make me wonder if maybe Cloud Piercer, his weapon is maybe made of cinnabar, if he has some relation to cinnabar. I know when we did our episode about Ningguang, we talked about Plasterite and we kind of theorized that maybe cinnabar was an out of world material. Mm-hmm. So I am curious if, you know, we love to theorize that Celestia is the Ark. Uh, spaceship and then it crash landed right 
I mean, if it did and there was Cinnabar on it and it got left behind, I don't know. I mean, I know I'm stretching because that's what I do, but it's pretty interesting stuff to me. It's fascinating. Well, apparently the spaceship comes back to Honkai Impact Third's Earth with Griseo as the only person on it. Who is Griseo? Um, Griseo is a Honkai Impact third character that you meet during the Elysian Realm. She was basically someone from the previous era, um, which happened 50,000 years before the game. And she was a little kid when she basically went out on Project Ark to find other habitable worlds along with this other character named Cosma. And um, right now, literally now in the game, like she arrives back in the spaceship. But we, I don't know anything about what she went through or what happened. Um, I don't know what happened to Cosma. I, I don't know why she's still alive fifty thousand years later. Is she part of that pre, like anti Honkai group, the Fire Moth, like Doctor May, yes. that whole group of Kevin, a flame chaser, yeah, the flame chasers. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, the I Pro- love Kevin. Project Mantis, all that. Yeah. Which Kevin then goes on to do World Serpent, right? Fucking Kevin. Yes. Which is what... Kevin is my favorite character. That's relevant now, though, in storyline now. Like, chapters 20-something to 35 Mm -hmm. is World Serpent. But by the time we... Kevin becomes increasingly important as the game goes. Increasingly so. Yes. (laughs) He's also another experiments guy. (laughs) He loves his experiments. Um, so these organizations, these anti Honkai, I don't know. I don't want to say they're trying to be like the greater good, but they are kind of like anti Honkai, like Otto and Kevin, but they do these awful, evil things. Yeah. To stop, you know, the Honkai, but it's like at the cost of these young girls. Um, and so Kevin is really just one in the same as Otto um, and Shixel. So you have Kevin and World Serpent. With all their little experiments and projects. I know Project Mantis is like another one. Um, Yeah, it is a big storyline in Honkai Impact is that you have all these characters that are ultimately, they're trying to eradicate Honkai from the planet, but it's like at what cost? Like they do evil, horrible things to try to get rid of Honkai. Yeah, there's like Project Stigma, Project Ember, like they go on and on about like these different experiments that they do. Um, Project Ember, I think, is the Fuwa one, where it's a knowledge experiment. And I don't want to spoil too much, but there, I feel like there's connections there with like the not like forbidden knowledge and that stuff. Like it's just very mm. all similar feeling. It's a you know, hole, you were saying the whole th- no, no, you were saying the whole thing about like Kevin, my fave, and these other people kind of making like these anti Honkai groups. It kind of makes me think of like Conria too mm-hmm. and the fact that they were like anti-archon and they went to do their thing they're anti-celestia and you know genshin almost feels like the quote-unquote perfect world for the hershers right now because all the nations follow an archon but like they don't realize that the archons don't believe in celestia really <laughs> and you have like the abyss secretly working against celestia you have the fatui It seems very, again, similar, like the greater beings are being fought against here. And I am curious if Honkai is any prelude to what might happen in Genshin. Hmm. Good question. I I feel like there's like the fact that Welt is in Star Rail now and that we know it's the same Welt. That's a confirmed link between the worlds. But obviously, like we said before, Himeko, it's a different Himeko. It's a different Branya. They all feel a little bit the same. You get Kokolia, she's doing similar things. You know, you're in Bulabog, it's very mm-hmm. similar to, you know, the area that Kokolia in Hankai Impact Third is from. Will we see this in Shesnaya? Maybe. Like, it feels very like we might be headed that way. I yeah. mean, there's also a character in Hankai Impact who goes to an imaginary world called Sumeru. <laughs> Who, who's that? That's wild. His name is Sue. What? Oh, is that? It's yeah. Alhaitham. <laughs> yeah, Alhaitham is looks a lot like Sue. Yes. Really? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. they, they do. And they send so, him to Sumeru. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. an imaginary world called Sumeru where he sort of goes to like meditate. The game um, is, is all one game. That's why. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't it's like, like it. I'm done. She's like, I don't I'm like out. it. I don't like it. <laughs> to me, Sue looks like a mixture of Baiju and Alhaitham. 
Yes. Now, can, mm-hmm. do you guys think that, I mean, obviously you're talking about the where there's actual similarities and things like that, but do you think that, like, do you truly feel like there's certain people look certain ways because of a connection or is it because it's the same developers and it is the body models and stuff like that? I think it's a combo of both because it could just be like laziness that ended up working out. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, because I, ex- I imagine it's expensive to do, so why not? Mm-hmm. you know, use what you got. Yeah, I definitely think that it's a combination of both. Like, I think that it's like a wink and a nudge, but like at the same time, they're just being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's convenient. But now with ka they brought in ka and it was the real thing. Sorry. Yeah, can we talk about that Wait, for a what? second? Because like, <laughs> ka I know... Ka-ching's there I know, too? We all with... talk official yes. and ka Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. No so, one talks about... Ka-ching, Ka-ching isn't a... She's not a playable character in uh, okay. Honkai Impact, not but yet. she is in an event. And I will just to be clear, this event that introduces Fischl and Kuching into Honkai Impact, it's it's this is gonna get so meta, but um Auto Apocalypse creates a video game and <laughs> is showing it to Welt and getting his feedback on it. And the video game is in basically into that. And oh so official and Kuching. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. It's a platformer, I, right? Yes. Yeah, they tend to do that a lot too. They throw well, in I mean, these mini games that are like mm-hmm. wink wink, nudge nudge. That I mean it makes <laughs> sense since like the first two were platformers, but mm-hmm. like, like side Oh, that is so not like I love that. I love that shit. You I didn't get to play that. It. I'm sad I didn't get to play the the little event, but I hope they let us play it somewhere. Like are we is Genshin Impact just a video game within <laughs> Honkai Impact. It's a bubble universe video. It's a, yeah, another bubble. <laughs> well, we have Andreas as well. He's uh-huh. there. Yeah. Baby, baby puppy. And a as secret name Andreas. Um, yeah, it's um, you can fight Andreas in Honkai Impact. It's, it's his name? Okay, it is with Andreas. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Well, actually, I don't remember if it's his name, but it's like the wolf dominator. The Boreas. Dominator. Boreas, I think. Yeah, dominator. Yeah. Let's see. Also, Vera's Melancholy that is set in a planet within Honkai Impact. Which is so, oh my god, I want to know what these motherfuckers are doing. Like, oh, my idea of love is trying to take out your eyeballs. <laughs> it makes no sense! And just for travelers who might be like, what is Vera's Melancholy? That is Jean's favorite book. Uh, we do talk about it for a very long time in our Jean Gunhilder episode. But it's her favorite book. It's a romance novel, but there's a lot more to it. Um, I did want to just quickly, I can just sort of spitfire this, um, the other comparison. So there's very few between Genshin and Star Rail so far. I think the biggest obvious one is Diluc versus Argenti, who just right. came out. I just got him today. Ooh, congrats. Oh, shit. Um, there's Vanessa versus Himago. And that's really all I could gather for I Genshin think, versus Star Rail. I, I came up with a couple. I think there's like maybe they're a little looser, but mm-hmm. there's well the obvious March 7th and Paimon comparison. She's our little like narrator, mascot. annoying mascot, but she's <laughs> like less annoying and in, in I'm sorry, I know you guys love Paimon. Um, but there's that. And then there's um just this constant theme of space and constellations. Um if you yeah. play with Asta at all, she is like just yeah. like in constellations, just like your traveler does uh, when she's idle. I don't know if uh, You're right. the Aether do that too. Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of like. Wait, isn't is uh the voice actor for Asta? Is that the same voice actor that does Mona? Yes. And yes, a nice. Which is like, funny because she's like obsessed with the stars. Yeah, and she like a lot of her lines are like yeah star related. Um. So there's this constant of like constellations in space that you obviously it's a space game, but I think it's neat. Uh, mm-hmm. I also thought <laughs> that the oratrice mechanic mm-hmm. that animation just feels like you're doing a wish in in Star Rail. If you ever do a warp <laughs> ticket, it does. Yeah, it oh, feels God. very similar. Um, except yeah, no pom pom. Um, no pom pom. I think that's where they got it again. The the reusing of of certain mechanics or you know styles of shit it absolutely fucking is when you do your ticket and it's like beep beep mm-hmm. and it's like 
we have Nouvellet in the little background, you know, fucking skanking on somebody <laughs> or skying to bring that back from Fortnite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the mechanist. Eric, right, please, I fucking messed it up already, but just, just gone, these motherfuckers. Oratrice mécanique de analyse cardinale. I love it. I think it's very similar, but it's also like obviously very steampunky and gears. And so, yeah, there's that theme too. So, mm-hmm. um, between Star Rail and Honkai Impact 3, though, do you have any? I have a few. Yes. Honkai Impact versus Honkai Star Rail. I have a bunch. So, Bronya versus Bronya obviously uh haxer bunny versus silver wolf kakolia versus kakolia sila versus sila uh yeah, himiko versus himiko himiko versus argenti um sushong mm. versus sushong auto apocalypse versus luocha welt versus welt of course that's the, the actual same now character. we know it's the same yeah yeah uh old yanching versus young yanching that's Amanda's uh, boyfriend. Mm-hmm. No, no, Don Hong is my boyfriend. Yanching is my son. Mm-mm. Raven versus <laughs> yes. Natasha. Um, there's a Kafka Stigmata versus the playable Kafka. Yeah. Uh, previous era May versus Pela. And then oh. May versus Ron May, who hasn't like even Dr. been released. Dr. May? Yet. Sorry, yes. Dr. May and Pela? Yeah. I didn't even think of that. That's so good. Mm-hmm. And what was the last one you said? May versus Ron May, which is like a new character that hasn't come out yet. <laughs> oh, I'm like, who? I had Natasha and Raven also because they're like these mothers to these little orphan children of Bellabog mm-hmm. Underworld or orphan children of Nagazora, however you want to see it. They're the same. So I love that one. The Hyperion and the Astral Express. And Himeko is the leader of both crafts. You could say oh, that. Himeko. And then um, this one's a reach, but I love it because I use your blade character all the time. And when I'm farming and you can co-op, I take blade with me. And <laughs> uh-huh. in his burst attack, he he bursts a little red feather. And it's a very prominent red feather. And that is an Easter egg to me. That is a nod to Fuwa. Fuwa yep. yes. <laughs> I love it. Also, Cheng Shen's voice actress does Pela's voice. And I love that. That's not a crossover, but I, I was going to say uh, <laughs> Blade's voice actor is the same voice actor for Linny in Genshin. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Yeah, Damon Mills. Uh, there's a lot of voice actor crossovers, which is just fun for me because I like the voice actors. So Danny Chambers is Nilu and Arlon. You have Felicia Angel as Mona, Asta, and Hook, which is <gasps> cute. <laughs> I didn't know oh, that. I forgot um, she did Hook. She does Hook? Oh. Yes. Hook Elizabeth Maxwell baby. does Natasha and Rosaria. Alejandro Saab, most well known in my heart for Sino, but also does Jing Yuan, the general. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, Anjali Kunapaneni, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, is Dory and Sushang. And then Amber oh. May is Deha and Yanqing. Those are the ones that I like can confirm for now. That's cool. There's a lot more there than I thought. And yeah. there's a lot of interesting like crossovers. If you look at like the Chin- Chinese VAs too, like they have a lot of crossover as well. So it's fun that they're kind of dipping into their faves mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're able to bring them back for more. It's so cool that you hear the range of these actors too. I'm not a big nerd about voice acting, but I will say I really appreciate hearing the range of like Mona's voice actress, for example. Like she has such a specific like Mona ism when she's Mona. But then you hear her as Asta, and it's just as romantic, but like it's very it's very different. I don't know. And in Changshen, like, like I don't more know. Innocent. Yes. And almost a little more human. <laughs> like Mona's more yeah. of a character. But yeah, it's so good. And then Changshen, like, I don't know. I just know her voice so well. And I'm sitting there going, Pela sounds like Changshan, even though she's not doing the whole bite you. She's not doing that. <laughs> but it's just something about the little, little like pitch of her voice. And I was like, uh-huh. it's her. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> visual stuff. I wanted to, to cause you mentioned Linny and, and there are some visual uh, tie ins that we were talking about before with Genshin and the third. Um, and one of them is the little mascot that is Hoyo's mascot, or I like I say it's Hagai Impact 3's mascot as well. Um, Homu, 
Is that his, how you say From the bunny? Is the little the yellow, yellow bunny. bunny. So you can see him all throughout Genshin. Um, he is in Yao Yao's backpack, in her little basket backpack. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's also prominent with the unusual hilly churl. He mm-hmm. actually throws like homu, like plushies at you in his little attack. And then if you go to his artwork in the archive, I think it is in Genshin, you can see like homu is very prominent. The Which like, is fun because cinema. that's a basically a video game character in Honkai Empire. And that's supposed to be a uh, that character is supposed to be like homage to like the creator. I think it's Dawei, if I might be saying his name wrong, but um mm-hmm. that character, the unusual hilly trail, also I guess when he dies, I looked this up. This I didn't know this, but it's kind of cute. When he dies he drops two cabbages, which are supposed to be yeah. I Ai-chan's buns, like her hair buns. Um, I Chan is oh my god, our host. I didn't know that. Yeah, I you didn't know, know that either, and I thought it was so cute. It's totally a nod. Um, yeah. it's a nod. Yes, yeah. and so Linny, I didn't know that that's what the cabbages were supposed for. to be. It's, I don't know if it's super true, but it's definitely like the the lore that people believe. Um, that I've seen. I like that the lore that people believe. It's the lore yeah. that everyone's going. <laughs> they're going with it. It's um, kind of now. If it's on Reddit, it's true. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Linny and Lynette. I noticed this when I was deep in Fontaine. They have uh, Homu on their outfits. Like it's engraved oh. in the top hat. It's in the hardware of the top hat. It's all over their outfits. They just, do. Yeah, I just didn't go look them up. That. Yeah, I noticed it, and I don't know. It, I don't know that anyone's talking about it anywhere. But that's my own. I think I was in here with Tiff and Amanda one day. And I mean, I that like, makes Look. sense because you know, pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Yeah, magic. So, and you have the Ermin Soul imaginary tree connection. Yes. Sea of Quanta. <laughs> not forbidden knowledge. That's like the biggest comparison. Well, not comparison, but the biggest connector between Honkai and Genshin as well. That really makes all of this make sense is the entire tree of life, bubble yeah. universe, leaf falls into the Sea of Quanta, cataclysm happens. <laughs> yeah, Theory. because you have imaginary tree. You have in the uh, two Honkai games, imaginary is sort of an element, but then you also have quantum or void as an element. And we know from Genshin that that's basically the abyss is the quantum slash void. And then you have this light energy, which is, um, what's it called in Genshin? Kavarena, you know, the thing that Simurg is made out of that created the Pari. Yeah, yeah. Kavrina. Oh, it's what yeah. uh, what got us the Nabu Malakata. Mm-hmm. You took, I took me so so long for that to fucking <laughs> click. I was like, what? <laughs> so yeah, it's like the the force that's the you know the light slash elemental realm is like the force that's diametrically opposed to the void realm, and it's that same idea of like you have the imaginary tree versus the sea of quanta. I am um, every time you say diametrically opposed, I have my brain immediately Hamilton. goes to Hamdel- <laughs> Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> I've been singing the song since you said it. Me like, too. I was like, bows. <laughs> oh, me too, Tiff. I am dead. <laughs> so funny. So question though, do you think that um back to quantum, do you think that you could argue that when you're in the spiral abyss mm-hmm. and, and your enemies have all these buffs and they're just depleting you of health are they using the energy of quantum against you well are you talking about rift hounds Uh, or you know abyss 12 2 i don't know the the horrible things that happen in in 12 1 and 2 there are definitely yeah the rift hounds are like the ones that drain your life like i mean yeah it could be quantum, and those are definitely creatures from the abyss so yes it's arguable that that's happening i had a question for you uh genshin nerds (laughs) <laughs> Can you explain this concept of dead gods to, you know, enhance you? So you, when you think about Kiana, mm-hmm. there's a relation there where they've used these genes in her mm-hmm. to create this clone. So could that be saying? so could that be connected somehow or similarly compared to the juice of dead gods? Don't isn't that something that yeah. happens in Genshin? Yeah, it could yeah. it could be. We is Did you explain like the dead gods thing? The Archon Genshin? residue? Is that what yes. you're yeah, yeah Archon, what or you mean the god residue? I don't know. It's isn't like that what Archon. that is? Isn't that the dead gods residue is mm-hmm, the remnants of dead gods? So like what what we would like Orabashi and and the kind of the corruption in leeway of dead gods from the Archon War. But what yeah. do they use it for? 
Well, the the idea is that you know in Genshin, when a god when a god or an archon dies, they have to pass on to the next world, basically. And if they don't somehow, you know, without Hu Tao's help or Zhao's help or whoever is like getting rid of these dead god spirits, they kind of simmer and they become salty and <laughs> they do shit. <laughs> they ferment and get gross. Sounds delicious. Like Al was mentioning Orobashi. I think Orobashi is a great uh, example because in Inazuma around his dead body, not in Watasumi, but uh, where Orobashi was like slain and you can find mm. the skeleton, um, you can find a lot of bad stuff happening over there. And they all say it's because of Orobashi. You, now you can find the scorpions that are from the Sumeru desert over there. Mm-hmm. So basically the idea... But- I was like, there's there's a specific illness also encompassing everything or, or of the people who inhabit around the body of Orobashi. So are they putting dead god juice inside of anybody? So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that's yeah. the question. Where can I get so some god juice? Basically, can I get some dead god juice, please? <laughs> we actually, we see the dead, we see the residue of the dead gods multiple times in Genshin. And we actually, for the very first time, see it in the manga with Kale. So oh. Kale was experimented on with the residue of dead gods, hence why she has the black fire power with inside of her. So she's now Kiana. the Sino okay. is sealed. Kale's um, Kiana, got it. On top <laughs> of that, yes. um, <laughs> on top of that, we also see it in Baiju's storyline, where Jiang Liang has been giving her husband a quote unquote poison that has dead god ar- juices in it. Oh, that's right. But it's right. helping keep his heart from failing. In addition to that, <laughs> this, I we forgot see it. about that. You can also see it with, we assume, Sino and his power of Hermanubis. And in general, the Torre and the stuff he did at the now destroyed Sumeru Hospital that I. Recently found out, I was looking in the manga and because I feel like I look at the manga at least four times a week. (laughs) And I was looking at the manga and I was reading this part from Kale and she literally burnt down that hospital. Like she is the reason that that abandoned hospital exists in Sumeru in the desert. Mm. Like a fucking boss. Because she made it abandoned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fucking yes. Because she's uh, Before she went in. Yeah, before she went and wandered in the wastelands, wherever the frick those are. And that hospital, if you go in there and you read a lot of the notes and things left behind and the wall etches, Dottore was experimenting on a lot of people with god residue and killing most of them. Mm -hmm. Wow, so we've already confirmed he's auto Kevin vibes. So there we go. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of connection here for me. Yeah, I do. I do like that. Yeah, and that's the thing is like the more and more you talk about it, there's more connecting it. I like it too. I wish we could see more of it in Star Rail. The Auto Kiana versus um Dottore Kale. It makes total sense. Mm-hmm. But does that mean Kali's yeah. gonna go evil? Or just lose it? Well, that's the million dollar lose, question, right? Lose control, maybe like And then D Luke is gonna sacrifice his life to save her. With the R3 I... Wolf's gravestone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god i just r3'd it i I'm know so why mad. i said that. <laughs> just, said that i just wanted a tenyari that's all i wanted and it was like <laughs> nope here's another wolf gravestone for your deal luke that's good i have one little random thing i want to bring up the stigmatas which are the um similar to artifacts i guess in honkai impact third they are all <laughs> i wouldn't say they are is all. this the one that has the power of the coochie some of them have the power of the yes. The drawings are very racy for some of these, but that's not what I love about them. The stigmata names, a lot of them are named for inventors and scientists and astronomers and physicists, composers. It's very like Age of Enlightenment type stuff. And I mm-hmm. love it. It's cute. Like just deep yeah. dive on the names of the stigmata. You have a ton of them to look through and they're really fun. We could be here all day listing them. Yeah, before there was... <laughs> playable kafka and star rail there was the kafka stigmata set and Honkai yeah. impact it looks like her too i think but it's cute i think it's interesting that they're actually like named after people like i mean we know that our artifacts have a lot of lore behind them in genshin and they are about people like you know the viridescent venerer is about 
Viri. Like, you yeah. know, it's about her. Um, and this is like Galileo and like Nikola Tesla yeah. and Edison. Like, it's very weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really cute, though. There's like Beethoven. I'm trying to think of them. Like, oh, Einstein, who I think looks like a uh, Albedo. Oh yeah, we never we never did the uh, Einstein versus Albedo comparison. <laughs> Einstein's a girl, but Albedo's a girl. You know, yeah. <laughs> Einstein's a boy, and Albedo's a boy. Who cares? <laughs> I do see. I get what you guys say with that. At first, I was like, "Shut up," and then I looked at it. And I was like, "Oh man." It's just, mm. it's every, it's like the whole vibe, though. It's like yes, they're, they're both very, very calm and brilliant. Brilliant. Einstein's got dottore hair though, so I'm not here for it. No. <laughs> uh, I do. I do have one other thing I saw recently that I thought was really interesting. In Genshin, we have our favorite landlord, the Goths, who have the Goth Hotel. They're Mona's landlord. Oh uh, well, Mister Goth at least is Mona's landlord, and he also says he owns another hotel somewhere in Mondstadt that we haven't seen yet. Cough, cough. Must be in the port, but in Bellabog, there's also the Goth Hotel. Mm -hmm. Um, in a the lot Goethe of hotel. Well, so Goth in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean is spelled G O E T H E. Goof. Yeah. Um, but it's it's Goth basically. Like that's it means huh. the same thing. And they also own hotels. And if you talk to them, like they have this whole thing about how like they used to own hotels and then they went bankrupt, but then one brave goth got back up and did it again. And it's like, is Genshin like, is this the goths? Is this the same person? Hold up. I I just think that's so funny. There's also someone in that hotel named Regine, I think, who has this whole theory about doppelgangers like from bubble universe <laughs> oh my god Do you know what i'm talking about i think so yes it's just crazy i and you know in bella bog specifically like i ran into a character i literally was like that's detore what <laughs> and then there's like these two characters that, that look like uh sh like girls shing show and shang yun like hanging out together and i'm like mm, hoyo <laughs> wait i mean but here there's even more that we could go about that because his, the name bellabog is very specific i can't remember what episode we talked to i talked about this but there's a uh slavic god that basically is it's not two-faced they're two entities where one is light and one is darkness and oh my god hang on does sushang have a chicken in honkai impact third while while al's looking up no she doesn't have a chicken but she has the same sword but remember her um she was a disciple of fu hua Sushi. and yeah, yeah. fu hua is you know one of her forms is phoenix uh -huh. so that's why she's like phoenix whatever she says and red Sarah. feathers go <laughs> and then blade shows up <laughs> Okay, so it, they're they're basically two gods that are of the same body, but are kind of two entities. So it's Chernabog, which is the black god, and Belabog, which is the white god. Um, and basically, one is for misfortune, and one is for like good and like uh, prosperity. So it's like this. Um, they're yin, yin and yang. So it's very interesting that Belabog in Honkai is considered the white god and has the affiliation of this deity i know weird mythology man <laughs> bellabog is, is, is bellabog's about to be uh shneznaya man yeah i, I mean and the saritza is going to be kokolia or yep. bronya absolutely I'm, it I, is the region putting money on that yeah Tiff, do you it. putting money you putting money too i'm putting money down i'm putting hardcore whale money down for this Tiff, what kind of money are you going to put down? A penny. No. I'm not invested. <laughs> not even after all this great unpacking we've been doing. She's yeah. like, mm -hmm. I wasn't listening. Yeah. <laughs> partly, Did we partly sell you on any of it? Um, You made me want to do a couple more things in Genshin. <laughs> not the titties. That. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I feel motivated to play all three because of this like whole tie-in. I, I mean, I... I I think I, I fight the crossover of it because um, I don't like the idea of Honkai being the granddaddy version. Like, I, to me, Genshin's the world. 
fuck everybody else. Those are like the smaller ones to it. So I think that's actually where some of my fight kind of comes in is that I'm like, I don't like the fact that the game that I love isn't the main one. Not and that OG. my game might be just a simple little game inside another one. And that bothers me. But I have to say, I was very interested. I did not know there was a zombie thing. So that was really cool to hear. Um, had no idea about that. Um, and that for a moment made me go, oh, that's really cool. Then I was like, oh, I got to read. It's not voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's the hardest that's, part. <laughs> that really honestly would be one of the hardest parts for me is like, just because... I'm so invested in Genshin and when there's not voiceover, I get like, oh, please, somebody just read this to mm-hmm. me. That's why it's yeah. taking me so long to catch up and I'm fine with it, but it's it's I've got to be in the right environment, headspace and setting to sit down yeah. and like crank it out. Yeah. Um, so I get you. I, I like to say this, like, I don't think any game is really better than any other in this three universe games of Hoyo. <laughs> um, I love them all for different reasons, but I'll say that I know what you mean about, like, Genshin being not the OG and you're like, damn, because, like, I felt that way, too. And I like Genshin was the first game I got into out of the three. But I like to think that the beauty of Genshin and the high quality of Genshin could at least exist because of this other game. And so, yeah. Like at least mm-hmm. it's benefiting from because you see the graphics in in the third. It's it, they're not yeah. <laughs> they're nothing to write home about. Like yeah, um, yeah. and they'll get it was a, it was a mobile only game originally, mm-hmm. and they, they ported it over to PC. There's a lot wrong with it. Like the camera moves a little weird. Like definitely they're going to update it. And you know I don't know Brandon if you want to talk about that new release that's coming. But I will say yeah, this doing like a part two. I think it's like Genshin. Um, it's like the saying. I guess it would be like the third walked so that Genshin could run or something. That's how I like kind of self-soothe when I think about like, <laughs> damn, Genshin is really a blip. Yeah. But really like lore wise, it really is just like a little driplet compared to like it's all its own crazy. separate thing, you know. But they're all equally great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Star Rail is a good time. I have started to call the um the new character that's gonna be coming out um in Genshin the fake pom pom. Because she looks like pom pom. Like every oh. time I've seen like you guys doing wishes, I pom pom's phenomenal. So <laughs> this character looks like Genshin's version of pom pom. Yeah, I, I forget the name. Of the the name character. is um yeah. The name is uh, uh. I just know she has a fucking gun. She's got a rifle. Shava something. Shava. Shava the put a she, bullet in your fucking. She does face. look Shava like Shava the um, Hut. <laughs> Devarus. She looks just like Pom Pom, though. Right? Like, it's yeah, like Pom Pom as a human. Yeah, yeah, Chevreuse. That's going to be my way of saying it, but I obviously could be wrong. It sounds but... like it is, yeah. Similar to Shantou. <laughs> yes, Chevreuse. I got to give a little French little uh, accent to it. Chevreuse. And she has a... purple hair like Chavrusse. Chavrusse. She Oh, that like might Siren. be a Chevreuse. She looks like Chevreuse. Sounds very French. Is she going to be a train conductor? She sure looks like it. No, she like kills people. <laughs> yeah, she does have a rifle. I think she works in the Palace of Marmalade. And she's the newest uh, eye patch character. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> she's the true. executor of justice, a ship captain on the seas of Fontaine. She wields a pyrovision and a marksman's rifle. They wow. should have just named her Siren. She, does, she, she looks, looks like, like Siren. Should that should have a pyrovision? I mean, yeah. she will. <laughs> she shot her eye out. She's. The kid from A Christmas Story. Brandon, just talk about, before we like really leave, like talk about um, the new update that's coming to the third, because we're sitting here saying it's an old game, but like it's getting a really big revamp. Yes, it's getting a part two, and they are actually updating it. So it's like a, a new game, essentially, but um, like the it looks very similar to Star Rail in terms of, you know, the quality. But unlike Star Rail, it's not going to be turn-based. It's going to be like real-time combat. So I'm very excited to play it. Mm. And it's sort of, you know, part one of the game, which is basically the first 35 chapters, it has like a real ending. So I'm really excited to see what they do when they pick the story back up. It looks like it's getting such a revamp too. Mm -hmm. Like visually going to be on that level. Of the other two. yeah it's a, a much needed boost in quality we did get an update like recently i just hope that they still have these dramatic heart-wrenching anime cutscenes that we've been spoiled by because that is something that genshin like and honkai star rail they cannot touch 
Honkai Impact in any way in terms of emotion. Like Honkai Impact is a much more emotional story. I agree. Yeah. Well, I hate to cut your own special short. Well, it's your Zoom account. It's uh, short as <laughs> yeah, a it's, choice. It's my Zoom account. I'm sorry we broke my- in. We had to. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. know, I'm okay with the break in for now. Although I do think you guys owe me some primos or something for it. Oh, <laughs> <not>. <laughs> Crystals, maybe. I need you, therapy. Uh, <laughs> Being forced. If you forced open the game, to listen to it. If you guys download the third, I will give you each a ten pull oh. in that game. Okay. Mm. What? Well, what if we've already fucking downloaded it? You're on my well, team already. Well, it sucks to suck, Al. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <Who knows? laughs> my free, free ten pulls for t- p- Tippy and t- <laughs> <laughs> but that i do think that's all we have for today so if you enjoyed this episode travelers please feel free to send us an email tells it about pod at gmail.com let us know what you thought of this episode what you'd like to see in the future you can also follow us on twitter tales of Devot, or instagram tales of Devot pod and this has been what are you calling this Honkai is- for the holidays <gasps> i love that this has been Honkai for the holidays we hope that Everyone has an awesome holiday season. We hope you all get some days off and get to relax and maybe have cookies and spend time with family. And spend time with Kiana. <laughs> and and <laughs> family or found family yes. <laughs> in Genshin. Um, until then, travelers, safe journeys. We'll see you next time. Bye, lesbians. <laughs> Not again. Let's lesbians. <laughs> oh, it's a Let's holly go. jolly conkai. Loves Hong Kong this whole time. <laughs> <laughs>